getting ready to meet Fred at the Sugar Works. We are um, heading to Michigan, gonna go up across the UP, and then uh, down into Wisconsin, and uh, meet some maple farmers that uh, we know, and meet some maple farmers that uh, we have yet to meet. So, looking forward to this trip. It's one of the things that Fred and I like doing. Um, looking forward to it. Sugar Bush Supplies, Fred. I go right up there on that red Jeep, right there. I have never seen a copper sap bucket in my life. Have you ever seen Lake Superior, Fred? <laughs> no. Is it worth driving an hour out of our way to see Lake Superior? No. What? I got you a cinnamon pumpkin spice. <laughs> Back on the road, Fred. Yeah. What are we, north of Lansing? We are east of Lansing. Lansing straight ahead. Oh, no kidding. And we're going uh, to visit Dale Forrester in Atlanta, Michigan. Right. And then we're going up to Marquette. So we can see Lake Ditchie. <laughs> yep. That's it, buddy. This is it, Fred. Gamble Road. That looks like Lappy or Tubi if I've ever seen it. Pump house. I think I don't need her anymore. Michigan Maple Weekend, buddy. We are here. That's a nice little mailbox there, isn't it? Okay. Oh, they're boiling. Look at this. They're boiling here in Michigan. Very cool. Got the little shop here. Great Lakes Maple Supply. He's unloading. Little dump truck. This is this is beautiful in here. Look at the ceiling. This is awesome. All right, since you're the hardest working here, I got a question for you. What's your name? Adeline. Adeline. Do you have any interest in moving to Ohio and working for a maple operation in Ohio? No. <laughs> you sure? Yes. You didn't even hesitate. Why didn't you hesitate? Because I already know I'm going to be a vet when I grow up. You already know what? I'm going to be a vet when I grow up. Oh, okay. You're going to be a vet? Well, you do really good at what you're doing. I appreciate you greeting us at the door. You're a good, uh, you're a good host. It could be a large animal or a small animal like that. Well, you said it's Adeline? Mm -hmm. Does anybody call you Addie? Yeah. Everybody. Really? Everybody? Yeah. I ended up with three boys. If I had one girl, you guess what her name was going to be? Adeline. It's true. Because Addie's cool. Do you know what maple syrup's good on? Um, well, I like it on pancakes, but Dale puts it on everything. Everything but the floor, right? 
Everything he eats. We've even lifted it off the floor. Stuff. Yeah, I've done that. He puts it in his chili and the ice cream cheese. Oh, really? On a spaghetti? Yeah. Like elf. Is this a turbo too? Uh, no, it's going to be a volcano. Uh, I bought it, it's a 50 50, so half front, half back. And it's got a real burner in it. What are you concentrating to, Dale? 20%. So you're going up to 20. This yeah. is beautiful. So I'm getting about a uh, barrel of syrup an hour off, and it's taking me about 50 gallon of fuel an hour. So I'm about a, I'm about a quarter of a quarter of fuel to a gallon of syrup. Pretty light stuff. Yeah, uh, I got these ladies running the back here. They do a pretty good job. How far into the season are you, Dale? Well, hopefully a third, <laughs> you know, a quarter. I don't know. But they are telling. We still got a fair amount of snow. We haven't had any warm weather. We might have had one day of 50. Is that right, ladies? Any idea? Maybe we had a 50. Yeah. But a couple 40s. But like yesterday, we got two gallons of sap, and we only got. Uh, How many taps are you running? 10,000. 10,000 on this rig here? Yeah. I'm pretty Is sure. Is this a two, three and a half? No, uh, four by, four by six feet. I'm gonna, can I get a shot yeah, of just the syrup? Yeah. So one of the problems here today is we've got an open house, so we're just running half throttle. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't want to boil all my sap away. So I used to run this one if I was pressing on the guns, and I think we're at 100. Is this reversible? Uh, no. So that's all your flow rates. Wow. Uh, this is the arrow. I say this is the arrow, but normally, like for example, let's just say that would come in today. I usually shut down at 4 o'clock, done boiling, and then I, whenever I concentrate today, I boil tomorrow. And while I'm I'm concentrating today, I'm sending that up here in this pump, 30 gallon a minute, and I plus my evaporator. That works perfect. No acid, no separation. I got it. This is for you, Kevbo.
If you push hard enough, you're going to push that marble through the tennis racket. And in comparison, a sugar mile, a water molecule is that small compared to a sugar molecule. So we're taking 500 pounds of pressure and we're forcing the water molecules out of the sack. And then that's how I not reverse osmosis works. By high pressure, a fine, fine, fine filter, and we're forcing a pure water molecule out of the same from your kitchen sink, except for we keep the concentrated sap. We collect the dirt and we check the dirt and then that's the pure water and I give all samples out to permeate and then it tastes flat like snow. And then I say it goes to the rule of 86. 2% sugar comes out of a tree. 2 divided by 86 is 43 gallon of sap, 2 gallon of syrup. We boil up 40 gallon of water, the gallon of over is syrup. We go to 20% sugar. 20 divided by 86. 4.3 gallons of sap, 2 gallons of syrup. We boil off 3.3 gallons of water, and we got a syrup. It used to take 4 gallons of fuel or a big pile of wood to make a gallon of syrup, and now we take a quart of fuel or a small pile of wood to make a gallon of syrup. So what are you doing in here? Uh, What's that? So do you, are you running this evaporator? Well, it kind of runs itself. Are you intimidated at all by this? Now that everything's running good, if bells and whistles start going off, then maybe a little bit. So you're up in Marquette half the year, or a good part of the year, and then... Just uh, uh, July and August. What's your name? Alexandra. Alexandra. I'm Nate Bissell. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So how long have you been helping Dale? Ten years. What? Yeah, I first uh, met them at their place in Jackman, Maine. So, really? Yeah. So I worked a season in Maine, and then... How cool was that? Uh, it was really it's cool. It's Maine cool. I want to go yeah. up there. We're gonna, I'm going to head up there in two weeks, I think. Yeah, it was... Uh, that was my first introduction to maple syrup. And then... Uh, Did you grow up in Michigan? Yeah, grew up near Lansing. Okay. Um, a small town called Lanesburg. Okay. And now I, I live in Lansing. I work at MSU, and I do my, uh, my summers in Marquette. What do you do at MSU? I work in the International Center. Program. Oh, really? Yeah. Nothing to do with syrup or time. 2012, I went out there. So Fred and I are stopping to fuel up before we head north. We're about an hour from the Mackinac Bridge. And um, we're just fueling up. Just finished a nice tour at Dale Forrester's place. Uh, they were just gracious hosts. It was cool seeing the sugar house. Uh, it's one of the coolest sugar houses I've been in. Been in a few. Been in a few. So, hoping to get some shots of the Mackinac Bridge as we're uh, driving across there. So, uh, pitter patter. <laughs> Adjust that visor. I'm good there. It was in the mirror. Oh, well, maybe you could move that visor around. No, I didn't. Yeah, too much weight. Is that visor keeping the sun out of your eyes? It is. So, this is the last great lake I have yet to see. Behind me is Lake Superior. Uh, Fred and I stayed in Marquette, Michigan last night. So Lake Superior is frozen from what I could tell, at least in the area I can see. There's a lighthouse out there that had a blinking light, but this is very cool. I know it's not much for you to see, but uh, it is for me. I have the greatest job in the world. I get to see some pretty cool places. So there it is. Lake Superior, the fifth great lake that I have yet to see, and 
now I have lived. So Fred is driving Miss Daisy, and we are leaving the shorelines of Lake Superior, and gotta go find a gas station. So we are in the UP, and we are heading to Wisconsin. Which way did we go? I don't know. Which way did we turn in here? I feel right. <laughs> That's the way we turned in. There it is, Lake Superior. Won't see it again for a while, Fred. Yeah. We are in Wisconsin. Six miles. Well, probably a nice little restaurant. There. I know. No. We're here, buddy. Yes, we is. You don't have steam flying. Oh yeah, he does. A little bit. A little bit of steam flying. Your destination is on the left. steam rising here at Sipple. This is an exact copy of the first evaporator I bought. This is a D&G 2x6 drop flu. This is almost identical. It is identical. Right here. Same arch. You even have the same sides with the gobbleoon. I had a little blower in mind, but this is the exact same copy of the evaporator I started on. So this is a steam evaporator. We're at Simple Sugar Bush. You can't really see it hopping in here, but you can see it hopping in here. Very cool. Very quiet. Pretty quiet, Andy. <laughs> it's pretty quiet. Well, you got a whole setup in here. What are you doing? You're running a locomotive with valves? <laughs> this is cool. That's not terribly high pressure, right? 60? 58? Yeah. You need a steam whistle. Do you really? That's awesome. Hi, Courtney. I'm good. Some steam traps there. We've got a few of those with our boiler. Not that many, though. Sure is quiet, Fred. I understand why people go to steam. I do. I don't think it has anything to do with the noise. No, I think it's efficiency. Yeah. The only thing I wonder is, like, consumers like darker flavored syrup. Farmers don't. In general. How big of a boiler did you get? Jeez. You care if I follow the pipes back? I'm super curious. <laughs> smells brand new is what it smells like. Oh my goodness. Where is the boiler? Here. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
smells like a new car. <laughs> Very cool. Well, you don't even need the other one anymore, do you? Well, you also gotta have a backup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, can you heat the whole warehouse with that boiler? I know it's like good. Yeah. So how many gallons per hour of syrup can you run off this guy? We got it right now. We've been doing just because we started. We've been doing about 375. What? Um, that's your evaporation rate or syrup? What? You're making a toad an hour. <laughs> All you got to do is turn the pressure up, Andy. That's it. <laughs> Where's the syrup coming off? Oh, you're just starting, so you don't have to draw yet. Okay. This is cool. You know how many people would love to see this? There's your steam. Well, that's a pretty violent boil, actually. I noticed the water dripping back in. Condensate. It's actually cool to touch. Fred, this might be the coolest thing I've seen in a while. Yeah, definitely. Oh my god, a little tickle tonight. <laughs> So you're running about 70,000 taps? Yeah. It's a nice toy. I understand why people do it. <laughs> yeah. Is it simpler? Yes, it's simple, you can't burn it. Simple. Is it one pan? One pan, yeah. How big are the uh, pipes? Did you really order a steam whistle? That's awesome. It's got an old Cleaver Brooks spoiler in there. This must be, it's so violent, it overflows. Is that condensate? I assume it's condensate. Yeah. I think it's condensate. So this is Courtney's domain back here. Courtney, how are you doing? I still get nervous every time we go. Now I have a question. Did you really order a steam whistle? That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. If I had a boiler, I'd have a steam whistle. I know Andy always said he wanted one, so when the guy was working on it, I said, hey, can you get a steam whistle? Alright, then. Good one. Your kids are gonna have fun with that. My neighbors are gonna hate us. You're right. You're right. <laughs> That's awesome. How's it filtering this year? Is it? Um, but I don't think I have my filter age to syrup pumping ratio down yet either. So I've been playing with it every time um, we cook. Are these, did you have the 20 inch presses last year? Yeah, I've got, I ordered another one, so I've got three of them. Do you? Just in case, because I, I can't be down with them. I understand. I just ordered my first one. You'll love it. The 20 inch? Yeah. I have two 15s, and when you start packing drums, you just gotta, you gotta go with 20s. They're just so nice. 
You know, H2O's got some good looking presses. That's the third one that I have. Is it? You, you're going to try it out and compare? You know what you should do is make a YouTube video to compare and contrast the D&G 20 versus the H2O 20. I would probably get in trouble. Oh, really? <laughs> nah. You know, he's got this boiler. You can heat it back here now. So. Yeah, they just look good. I like the way these look. Is there anyone that filters more syrup in the state of Wisconsin than you? Yeah. Than you? You personally. Come on, you filter more syrup than anybody. Well, I should say run through a filter press. Yeah, off off the well, we call them evaporators. I know you call them cookers. Well, whatever, same thing. <laughs> um, Is anybody filter more syrup than you? There are bigger producers in Wisconsin. Really? Yeah. I know no one works harder than you. That, that I might have to agree with. <laughs> Thanks for letting us stop and bother you. The new, the new evaporator was worth it. Like when we can cook thirty-two barrels in four and a half hours instead of sixteen plus hours. What are you can do with all your time? You have to add taps. When you first started it up, did you think about your little pump moving syrup? Well, I got two of them. Oh, you do. You got a backup. <laughs> oh, I see. You can actually divert over to here if yeah. you wanted. That's a little stream there. It's a little bit of syrup coming off that rig. Wow. This pump's just running hard. You're making Fred nervous in here, Andy. <laughs> Mm. Fred was ready to grab a bucket and start bailing. <laughs> That's coming out pretty good. Fred's ready to go. Driving Miss Daisy. Driving Miss Daisy, Fred. <laughs> <laughs>